They're not. You're exactly right, Mercy. Coronavirus plus some very awkward PR embarrassing gaffes have really set the tone of the Tokyo Olympics. We'll, of course, be cheering on Team GB, the largest delegation of British athletes to be going to play. 376 of them, as you mentioned, six of them currently isolating from coronavirus. But right now, let me just cast your mind back to London 2012. This here is the Copper Box Stadium. If you watched any of the basketball or the handball, it was all happening inside this arena. And let's talk to some of the people using it, because one of the big questions with the London Olympics was, what was the legacy of the Games going to be? What would happen to Stratford, the surrounding area, and also the people who live here once the Games had been and gone? Well, let's find out a little bit more. We've interrupted a little bit of a tennis lesson that's being run by Sab. Let me just interrupt. Now, you were championing young people in sport well before the Olympics even started, and actually were part of the bid for the Games to come to London. Tell us the story. Yeah, I mean, I was working at Leighton Orient Community Sports Programme at the time. We were working in four to five Olympic boroughs, so we were quite instrumental in trying to make sure that the Olympic legacy ideal was pushed right from the beginning. So I ran a range of projects, including one at Draper's Field, which is up the road. And in February 2005, when the Olympic officials came over to London, they drove past and saw what was going on. So there was a range of sports, football, tennis, cricket, everything going on. And just for people to see the types of communities in East London at the time and hopefully inspire them to give us the Olympics, which they eventually did. So nine years on, what are you doing now? What are you championing? And do you think the Olympics has lived up to the legacy it promised? Um, nine years on, I mean, I set up Salam Peace in 2009. Um, we're fortunate that the building behind us through one of my ex-young people who's duty manager we got access to. I think more should be still done around the legacy. I think the fact that we've had a massive regeneration, we've got fantastic buildings, housing, however... The local people that were here before the Olympics have still got the same social problems. We've still got crime. We've still got issues going on, uh, high unemployment, etc., and affecting the same communities. However, if you came to Stratford in 2005 and in Hackney and in Wolverham Forest, and now you come, you see these beautiful facilities. It is a huge change. Um, as an organisation, we do a range of sports. I've got colleagues of mine who run volleyball, netball, basketball, Football, tennis, everything, as you see here, we can just pop up and start playing tennis. Um, we work with the LTA on that. So I think we're fortunate as an organisation, but I think that's come from within. So I've always championed that people have access to everything, not just the same people being closed out of certain clubs and certain sports. And at its essence, you're really key and the sort of core part of what you do is getting young people into sport, getting them active and getting them passionate about being active. Yeah, absolutely. But I think for us, it's not just young. We work up to 65 year olds and in the same arena, sometimes we have children and adults training together. I think for us, the legacy is all our staff and volunteers have come through as participants. They're all local. Some come with very little qualifications, very little um, kind of objectives and aims in life and we try and push them forward. So I'd say that's our legacy and that's something we've always championed and will continue to. OK, so I'm going to go and interrupt the tennis no lesson now and speak to the boys. Boys, can you come over here? Why don't you just introduce yourself to me? Because summer holidays have very much kicked in and there's going to be a lot of sport on the agenda, isn't there? Yeah. So tell me what your name is and your favourite sport. My name is Issa and my favourite sport is tennis and football. OK, and what about you as well? I'm Zane and my favourite sport is basketball. Basketball, it's basketball that was happening uh, in the Olympics, of course, and it's going to kick off again in Tokyo. What does this organisation mean for you in terms of the amount of sport you can do in the week when now you're not at school? Um, it's going to be good to do a lot of sport because it's very fun. So it means that obviously we can improve our mental, physical well-being as well as socialise with other people. Yeah, that's great. And it also must be quite good for your parents that someone else can look after you for a little bit rather than uh, hanging around at home. What do your parents make of it? Um, Seb's my dad, actually. Oh, really? He didn't tell me that before. That's cheeky. So, yeah, in terms of normally you have to get parental permission to come on the TV, so we've definitely got that this morning. And what about you? Well, so I think it'd be useful for other parents because, yeah, they can just send their kids. They know they're going to have good provision, like and meet some of their friends and do some sports rather than just hanging around on the street and acting like hooligans. One thing that's really exciting, of course, the Olympics kicks off again just in a couple of hours' time in Tokyo. What sport are you going to be really looking out for? Um, I, I would like to look out for tennis and football. 
I think I'd be looking out at some of the field events, shot put, discus, those events. Yeah, they're exciting. Now, can you share any tennis tips with me? Because I was so terrible at tennis. My dad used to have a rule. I've got three younger sisters. When we were playing, he'd say, no saying sorry. If you hit it miles away, don't say sorry, sorry all the time. Otherwise, the whole game was really apologising and picking up the ball rather than actually playing. Have you got any top tips for us? Um, just keep your eye on the ball and like, don't take your eye off the ball or you can just hit it anywhere. That sounds very obvious, doesn't it? Oh, here, this is actually your son, which you hadn't revealed to me. So... Yeah, I'm not sure if he's far too good looking. <laughs> and some tennis top tips? So, uh, positioning's very important. So get your feet in a good position, have your weaker hand at the top, and um, so you can go forehand and backhand like that instead of having to run across the pitch. Right, I'm going to have a good listen about that. I often forget, you know, you have to move. I would often just reach out, which is absolutely useless. But the main thing as well, you really are championing this for beginners. So someone as sort of useless as me would be more than welcome. Absolutely. You're both welcome. You're both welcome any time. I mean, for, for us, it's about getting people active and bringing people together. So sports and engagement tool. And we've, we've got a few successes. So we mentioned the copper box had basketball here. One of our staff and one of my products who I worked with when he was 10 years old actually represented GB in that arena, a gentleman called William Saunders. So we have got people that have gone to elite level but for us it's about bringing different communities together and sport, food, art, music, fantastic ways of doing it and well, that's what we try and do. I think that sums it up absolutely brilliantly. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me interrupt your tennis lesson as well. I'll let you get back on with it. Oh, there's a racket. Oh, no, I thought you can tell. <laughs> I'm going to be terrible at this. Right, let's Who's go. Are you start, start? Zane? Right, back to the studio whenever you fancy it. All right, let's go. Can you come, come on this side? I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of apologising. Oh, there you go. Look at that perfect shot. All right, start again, start again. We've got, we got mixed doubles going on now, yeah? OK, all right, let's go. Oh, she got the backhand as well. She is a player. She's just teasing us, eh? Well, there we go. Rosie Wright at the Olympic Park.